Hey everybody, it's William Dorrington from TDG here. And today we're gonna to talk about the building access request solution that is available for download on GitHub. And, and the reason why I want to do a run through of this today and, and just discuss it in general is in England, especially the lockdown will hopefully be coming to an ease in the next uh, couple of months and people will start progressing back to uh, their workplace, etc. Which is why it's so important that businesses can keep track of who's going in and for what reasons, and what the capacity is of each particular office, meeting room, et cetera, uh, to ensure that they can still abide by the government rec recommended government uh, restri COVID restrictions. And what I mean by that is like two meter spacing, you know, face masks, et cetera. So what we need to be able to provide our workers with is the ability to state that they're going into an office or uh, or needing access to a particular space uh, within uh, an office area, an office uh, uh, sort of block. Uh, and then from that, ensure that you're, you're keeping track of who's going in and why and to ensure those cleaning uh, schedules, etc., cetera, are, are kept in tow. Now, this is exactly what the building access request solution allows you to do, which, as I stated, is freely downloadable from GitHub and it allows people people to not only uh, put through a new request, uh, but to have managers actually uh, approve or reject it and to keep track of overall capacity. And that's what we're going to run through today. So I've already installed this and embedded it within Teams. Now, Teams is a great place for this because it's a single point of access. You're already on there doing your various chats, your various collaborations in your team spaces using other uh, possible power platform solutions. So it makes sense that you can just go to an organizational wide app which you can pin to your left hand side select building access requests from there and go ahead and start processing what it is you need so to start off with i'm greeted by this sort of personalized homepage where i get to see you know my profile picture that i've uploaded uh, uh which is pulled from your azure active directory and also a bit of personalization there with hello william I can go in, I can see any safety precautions that my company is currently uh, taking on in to ensure that they're staying uh, correctly with the COVID regulations. So we've got mask wearing. I can actually read more about this. I can go to a link if I've got uh, some further videos or information off site about this, which I can quite quickly click through to. Uh, I can go uh, back. I can go and look at the other items such as hand sanitizer, temperature check, etc. Now, from here, if I'm happy with all that, I can go ahead and create a new request. Now, first of all, there's some key eligibility questions. So have you experienced COVID-19 symptoms in the past 14 days? No. Have you been in contact with anyone who has had COVID-19 symptoms in the past 14 days? Unfortunately, I haven't either. So I can submit and continue. If I did select yes to either of those, it would state that unfortunately I don't pass the key eligibility questions and that I should reach out to my manager or whomever I wish to push that message uh, in regards to responding to two. Now I can uh, submit and continue. If I've got many offices, I can search for them here. I want to go to the office of Awesome, which is located in England. You have as many different offices as you need. I can see the el eligibility criteria for this. So I must have approval to visit from the request process. So that's fine. I'm doing the request process now. Uh, and my business reason for access, I require access to tools that are on site. You know, you may be a scientist uh, needing to get to a laboratory. You may be a, a, a specialist engineer that needs access to specialist equipment that you, you may not have in your shed. Who knows? So here I can select save and continue. Now it defaults the uh, date today. I can select which meeting room I need. And this can be done via capacity. So as you can see, there's uh, 10 people can go into that, five or three. So meeting room one, I'm going to select meeting room one because I'm hoping to meet with some of uh, other workers while I'm there to work on this particular project i can now pick another date if i so wish so maybe i go for the 10th uh, and then i can book up another meeting room so this is going to be running over two days i may want both of those so now i can submit the request for those two days quite simply by selecting that submit request and initiates all the different flows and approval aspects needed that will come in just a moment in the way of uh, a flow bot that actually pushes that particular request out to your manager, your direct report, uh, and state whether your direct report wishes to approve or re reject uh, your request to go on site. That's just come through. Now, what 
is important to state is if you don't want it to go to the manager, you can just have an approval uh, teams where all the different uh, requests go through to, especially if like a, a centralized uh, sec uh, security manager, what, whoever, whomever it may be, facility manager that has to approve all the various requests that can do that. But as you saw, I got a flow uh, chat come through. So flow card, if I go to here, I get to see as the acting manager, I know I'm the manager of myself in this scenario, but I get to see that uh, who's requested access to which office, so the office of awesome, uh, the the uh, space they require access to, so meeting room one, uh, and the reason. So I, I require access to tools that aren't on site. I can chat with this individual, you know, and maybe question some aspects if I need to, or I can approve it. Once I'm approved, it will let the individual know that they uh, that it's actually been approved. Now, that's come back through to here because, of course, I'm both the active approver as well as a requester in this scenario. Hopefully, in most uh, companies, those two things will be complete. Uh, those two scenarios, those roles, those personas will be completely different. So here I can see that I have been approved to go in, which is fantastic. So if we head back over to the app. I can actually go and see this surface on my requests within the app itself. So within the building access request app, if I go to my requests, I can see uh, that I have various uh, approvals there. Uh, and if I go into that one, that was one for the 10th. I can actually see this one has already been approved, who's approved it and any on-site instructions. If I no longer need to go there, I can actually withdraw the request as well. So that leaves me very happy as a worker that I can go in and uh, and actually you know start my day as needed. Now what I'd like to quickly do is go in and approve the other request that came through. So here I can approve this, and that is for today. So that's to ensure I can go into the uh, building today. If I just go back to my application, what we're gonna see is the fact that uh, once this loads, if I go to my requests is the fact that the ninth has been approved also as well and i can actually check in so if i've gone on site i can check in here if i so wish to and as soon as i check in it'll just stamp my time uh, so I can see the time that I've actually checked in. Now, what is also good about this solution is it just it does come with a building security uh, part of it as well, where you can actually scan QR codes that are emailed out to the individuals uh, so they can check in if they have security personnel on a gate or, or, or stationed out the front or even a receptionist as well. So I can select the building that I am being the security officer or the receptionist for. I can save and continue. I can see that one has been approved for today and one has checked in as well. I can actually go and look at the request lists and see that it's uh, Mr. Dorrington that has indeed come on site today. It's been approved and the individual has checked in, which is really useful to see a running list of everybody that's come in or out. And I can actually check this individual out as well. So we can remove that from the the the, the uh, worker to actually the security uh, guard, the, rep set, uh, the receptionist or whomever it might be doing that. So they can actually check the individuals in and out if you don't want the worker doing it. Now, all of this is fantastic, of course, but what we really want to know is actually how do we set all this up? So if I go across, there is a building admin uh, part of it as well. And from the here, I can actually go in, I can configure all the different buildings. So I've already got one set up here, the Office of Awesomeness. Uh, within there, I can actually state where the what the building name is, the address, the country, whether it's monitored or unmonitored. I do we want QR codes, etc., going out? Do we have someone on the front desk that's monitoring people going in or, uh, and out, or do we not? Is there an auto approval threshold? So do you want all requests to be approved until there's only 50% capacity left? And then we need to start being a little bit more granular, a little bit more careful with who we let in. Is there any key eligibility criteria? And what are the on-site access instructions? Is there a new process that you've put in place that you want that individual to know about? And then do we wish to publish this as open or is it a case that it's just a draft at the moment? Now, if I save and configure those spaces, I can then add all the different spaces that are made up in there. So it might be zones or floors. It might be meeting rooms, uh, whatever it may be, you can actually configure. And it's quite simply done by giving a name and a capacity. And then it does all the logic is in the back end to ensure that that capacity doesn't go over. You can add as many new spaces as you need. And it will also tell you, you know, with that capacity, what your total number of seats are there as well. Now, the other great thing 
uh, about this is you can also set up all your safety precautions. So these are the precautions that are shown on the front page of the application to the worker. So you can keep this updated, edit it as often as you'd like, as maybe the precautions or the government uh, regulations change or your own regulations change internally as well. Any key questions that you would like uh, the, the app to ask that the participants must answer no to. They answer yes to any of them, then they're not allowed in. So you can keep a track of what's going on there and ensure uh, that, that the people that you're letting in uh, meet the requirements that, 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 that you deem unnecessary. And then we have overall settings. So we can actually uh, limit the number of days in advance an individual can book. Uh, and then you can also state the error about that. So it might be a case of actually, if you want to book more than 14 days in advance, please reach out to whomever it may be. The various channels that you wish the uh, adapted cards to go to, whether you want inline approval, so managers can go in to the app and actually approve from the app itself. So they get both a card, but they can go into the app. Uh, whether they need to require key questions completion, uh, do you need to answer those questions before reserving? I'd say most of the time the answer is going to be yes. It's, it's quite a, a critical thing to ensure you're, you're checking all your different workers. Uh, and if you're not allowed into the building because you don't meet those key eligibility requirements, then what is the failure message there? In this case, you're not able to attend the office currently. Please reach out to your manager for further information. So we're happy with all that then we can save and move forward. Now, last but not least, I know it's been quite a long uh, presentation, rambling presentation, then the other aspect is, of course, a Power BI report. So it's all well and good having all these apps, but really getting those uh, intelligent insights, that, that quick overlay is incredibly important. So here, admittedly, it's not a uh, overly thorough uh, data set that I'm using. There's only a few lines. But from here, you get a good overview of what's actually going on within your office per building, per floor, if you need to. So we can actually drill into all the different meeting rooms, uh, who's gone on site, who's checked in. Uh, and also you can break down that to an access report for that particular day. You can also break down to a building 360 uh, report as well and actually see who's had, uh, who's had access, what floor, what country, people on site, rejected requests, all the good stuff. And then this is really important. This is the contact tracker. So who's actually came in on what days and who have they had contact with? You know, who shared uh, spaces, meeting rooms, etc. So if someone does get flagged as COVID positive, you can quickly track down all the people that you need to speak with to ensure that they quarantine themselves. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to stop there. Uh, hopefully this has been useful. I'll post all the links in the description uh, of both the article post, the blog post and the various others. Uh, if you do want any advice on how to install this, it is incredibly straightforward, but please do reach out to me. Thank you so much. Have a good day.